The most important part of fishing is fishing in the right spot. The next most important thing is choosing the right lure. But how the heck do you do that? We've all went fishing, stood right next to somebody, and they're catching all the fish while you're not catching anything. And the only difference is your lure. They chose the right one and you chose the wrong one. Well, this video is going to change that scenario. You can be the one that will be catching all the fish while everybody else is standing there staring at you in envy. The reason that choosing the right lure is so difficult is because so many factors go into choosing the right lure. Bass are in different moods depending on the time of day, the time of year, the sun, the wind. I mean, all kinds of factors go into a bass's mood. Just like humans. I mean, we have, you know, your girlfriend gets mad at you and breaks up with you and you're happy because you get to go fishing more. Okay, you might be a little bit sad, but you're in a different mood than you were before she broke up with you. That's my point. So when choosing a lure, you've got to think a little bit more like a fish and it all starts with the time of day that you're fishing. Generally speaking, early, early morning and late in the evening are the best times, but that's not always the case. There's actually what I call feeding times and down times or resting periods, whatever you want to call them. But feeding times are when fish are most active. They're actually feeding. You can determine this, number one, because you're using moving lures and the fish are just hammering them. Number two, you see birds and other activity on the water chasing bait fish or you know hunting bait fish. Those instances, that means it's a feeding time. When birds are more hanging out in the trees, taking a nap, you're not seeing the seagulls dive down actively, you're not seeing lots of splashes from other fish, that probably means you're in kind of a lull or a low time or a resting period, and that's time to switch to more finesse, slower presentations. And I like to keep it really simple in this instance. If it's really windy, I'm gonna use moving lures, simply because they're the ones that I can actually still fill a bite with. If I'm using real finesse light lures, I can't fill that bite even if they are biting it. So generally, windy conditions, I go with moving lures. Calmer conditions, I go with really slow finesse techniques. Keeping it simple this way has helped me, for one, keep my sanity, and for two, it's actually helped me catch more fish. The sun is a huge factor. Whether it's cloudy, whether it's sunny, whether it's partly cloudy, or anything in between, it really affects how the fish are gonna set up on certain structures, how the fish are gonna act, and so, You've got to keep this in mind. You've even got to remember how the sun is set up so your shadow's casting over the water and you might be spooking fish not even realizing it. But once again, I like to keep things very simple. If it's bright and sunny outside, more than likely the fish are going to go down a little bit deeper or they're going to try to find some shade. For instance, one time when I was fishing a strip pit, all day long went and had like two bites. I was coming back to my truck and I just so happened to see a shady spot cast my lure right there, boom, caught one, happened again, happened again, happened again. I made a pattern out of it and ended up having a really great day, but it was because the sun was high, the fish were in a shady area, and they just didn't want to be in that sun. So the sun can be critical in positioning fish, the sun can be critical in which lures to use as well, because I could throw a crankbait and they wouldn't chase it, but when I threw the jig up into the shade, they were hammering it. Now most people don't fish in the winter time like it is now, but it's actually a really good time to fish. And that's because the fish are still active. They're just less active. So that means in cold weather months, I'm gonna slow my presentation down for the most part. Every now and then, it's better to throw a crankbait out there and just burn it back and get that reaction bite. But most of the time, I'm gonna throw slower presentations, really try to fish an area thoroughly, and then move on to another one if I'm not getting any bites. In the springtime, as the water's warming, my retrieve starts to speed up. My lure selection becomes more moving lures than slow moving lures or finesse lures, except for when they are actually spawning. When bass are actually spawning and on their beds, I'm gonna go to finesse lures or lures that I can just literally set in their bed and pester the crap out of them and annoy them till they bite. In the summertime, I start with moving lures. I try to find the fish. Moving lures, I'm talking crankbaits, spinnerbaits, bladed jigs, and then, if I'm not getting bites or I find a few fish and then they stop biting, I'm gonna switch to my finesse techniques like a drop shot, like a wacky rig, and even a jig in instances. In the fall, it's all moving lures. And I say it's all moving lures. Generally speaking, it's all moving lures. Fish are very active, feeding up for the winter. I'm gonna be throwing that crankbait 
nine times out of 10, but when I'm not getting bites or they stop biting, I will switch to a little bit slower presentation. Lastly, water clarity. I think water clarity is very important. I fish a lake, most of the time that's pretty dirty compared to most lakes. I mean, I'm talking like two foot or less visibility at times. And in that instance, I want very sporadic. I want a lot of vibration so the fish can really find my lure. Now, I also fish a lake way up in Michigan and it's crystal clear. I mean, you can see like 10 plus foot down. And in this instance, I actually fish a lot of lures that don't have a lot of action or a lot of techniques like a drop shot and a wacky rig because the fish can see my lure from a mile away. I don't need that extra vibration to attract their attention. Now there's obviously a lot more to learn about lure selection, and that's why I made a lure selection mastery video course, and you can find that link down in the description below. It helps support the channel so I can keep bringing you content like this. And if you guys enjoyed this series, I'd appreciate you comment down below and let me know what you want next from anglers.com. Lastly, if you haven't already become a fishing fanatic, go ahead and subscribe to our email list. I'll leave that link down in the description as well, and I'll catch you in the next video.